Today in our 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee, you're going to be taking a look at, I'm going to show you how to install, the Roadmaster MX base plate kit with removable arms, part number 1427-3. What our base plate looks like when it's installed, these are going to be designed for heavy duty use. It's going to attach directly to the vehicle's frame. It's going to provide attachment points or connection points for motorhome mounted tow bars. This base plate is going to have a black powder coat finish. It's going to resist any rust or corrosion. And it doesn't require a crossbar like some of the other base plates out there. This base plate is going to have removable arms. You simply pull the pin and clip, remove the arms when not in use, and it maintains a nice sleek look. Keep in mind that the easy hook safety cables that come with the Roadmaster Sterling tow bar will not work with this base plate because the cables connect to an anchor plate on the quick disconnect crossbar. Your smaller holes down here in the bottom can be used for a padlock to lock your removable arms in place. And your larger holes up here are going to be for your safety cable hookups. Another nice thing about this base plate, it's going to have a pre-welded bracket for your wiring accessories. As far as the installation goes, it is a fairly straightforward installation. It is pretty simple. You can do it in your driveway or in your garage. It's not going to be any welding required. It's going to mount directly to your frame. There is a little bit of drilling you're going to have to do, but it's a very small amount of drilling. Your front fascia, depending on which model you have, may require you to do a little bit of trimming, but it won't be much. It is going to come with all the necessary hardware. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let me show you how to get it installed. First thing you want to do is take a flathead screwdriver. We're going to remove this panel right here. We're going to have six pushpin fasteners that we need to remove. Take the screwdriver, put it in the open in there, and we'll just pull them out. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the grill. We're just going to pull straight up. It has some little, uh, I guess you'd call them little hooks. The hook right around the back edge of the bumper fascia. We'll set that aside to be reinstalled later. Next, we're going to take the same flathead screwdriver. You're going to have four fasteners right across the top of your fascia. Pop out the center, just like that. Now, on the inside front edge of each fender well, you're going to have two plastic rivets. We're going to take a drill bit. You need to drill out the center. This one. Just like that. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Next, we're going to take a 7 millimeter socket on each side of the vehicle. You're going to have a bolt right here that holds your front fascia to your fender. Go ahead and remove that. Now, underneath the front of the vehicle, you're going to have three 10 millimeter bolts that are connected to your radiator support. We need to remove those. We use a 10 millimeter socket. If you have fog lights, you're gonna need to remove uh, the wires going to your fog lights and pull out on the plug. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Now with an extra set of hands, we're going to remove our fascia. We're going to start on the outside, kind of pull out, and we'll just slide it forward. And we'll set this out of the way to be reinstalled later. Next we're going to take a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to remove the bolt that's holding this cover on. We're going to have one of these on each side of the vehicle. Now our vehicle is not equipped with tow hooks. If your vehicle is equipped with the tow hooks, you're going to want to remove them at this point. Then you're going to want to follow the instructions on removing the hardware that holds the tow hooks in place. Since we don't have them, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. Next thing we want to do is take a half inch drill bit. We want to open up these two holes on the bottom of our bumper core. We're going to do the same thing on the other side of the vehicle. Now because we have bare metal, I suggest taking some clear coat, some paint, any color because this is all hidden and spray that bare metal. Cover it up so you don't 
it can prevent any uh, rust or corrosion later on down the road. We're gonna take two half inch by one and a quarter inch carriage bolts and a backing plate. What you'll notice is that our holes are closer to one side and they're offset. So what we do is we wanna match the holes with the holes in the bottom of our bumper core. This one's a little bit closer. If you take your plate and you hold it up like this, you'll be able to match the holes. So this side, we want this closer edge towards the engine. We're gonna go ahead, insert one. Your instructions tell you to put both of them in and then slide it up into place. However, you may drop, pull this one out or push it out. If you do that, there's a hole back here in the back side of the core that you can reach in there and get your bolt. I suggest doing it like this. We'll put this one in on this side. And we're gonna feed it up this way. Go ahead and get this one in place. And then if we come in from this side right here, we should be able to get this one in. Just like that. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now you're gonna take your receiver brace. We're gonna go this bar over top of our wiring harness, right on the bottom side of our frame rail. If you see how this brace, this flat uh, part, we're putting it up against the bottom. So that's how you're gonna be able to tell if you have driver or passenger side. You want this plate to be on the top. Now we're not gonna be putting, we, we're gonna be putting Loctite on, but we're not gonna be doing it with this step because we're gonna be using this as a template to drill some holes. Now we're gonna take a lock washer and a nut, and we're gonna loosely install this to hold this in place. And we just wanna finger tighten this right now. We're gonna do that same thing on the other side. Next, we wanna take our round nut plate we're gonna feed it in through the front of our bumper core. We're gonna to go to this very back hole in our brace. We'll go all the way back like this. Then we're gonna take our half inch by three inch hex bolt, lock washer. We're gonna take red Loctite. If you don't have uh, any red Loctite, make sure you pick that up when you order your base plate because it is uh, required to put on all of our hardware. We're gonna go to this very back hole in our brace, and go up through, and then we're gonna thread that into our nut plate that we just inserted. And we just wanna finger tighten these. We don't wanna tighten them down all the way over just yet. You can see that reinforcement that runs across the center of our frame rail. What we're gonna do is take a half inch drill bit, we're gonna use that center hole is a template to drill a hole right through it. And you're gonna repeat that on the other side of the vehicle. Next, we're gonna take a half inch by five inch hex bolt, lock washer. You're gonna need your square back plate, and you're gonna have a spacer like this. This spacer is gonna go right to that hole that drilled. But if you can see, this center brace kind of, uh, it's not letting it go in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pry bar, and we're just gonna pry up on it right here. Just kind of bend that up a little bit. Just enough to get that spacer in there. And we're gonna slide our spacer the hole or our second the hole that we just drilled. But we're going to take our square nut plate, roll the top fit, again five inch, half inch uh, hex bolt, lock washer, and make sure you put Loctite on it. And go up through both of them. And we're going to thread it right into our plate. Again, we're not fully tightening these, we're just hand tightening them right now. 
just like that. So now we're gonna take the two remaining bolts that we have in our kit. They're gonna go through this front hole. What it's doing is this hole in our base plate is not lining up exactly with the hole in the frame rail. So we're gonna take our half inch drill bit and just kind of open that up just enough to get our bolt through. really don't have a lot of room to move. That's what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of clear coat in there. Go up, through. Lock washer. And then our nut on the inside of the frame rail. Again, we'll just finger tighten this time. Now we're gonna repeat that same thing on the other side. We're gonna have two more hex bolts, last two in our kit. We're gonna go up through this hole right here in front of our brace. We'll have a backing plate. We'll go in right over the top, put on the lock washer, then our nut. And again, we're just finger tightening everything right now. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now we're gonna tighten our hardware, three quarter inch socket. We're gonna start with these back two right here first. And then for this one, if you wiggle this, you can put a pair of pliers in there and cut it off if you want, but if you just wiggle it around enough, this thing will break off. So what you might have is the center brace there, if it gets in the way, you take, you take your socket, set it on top like that, and just get enough of your wrench in there, we'll be able to tighten it down. You're going to do the same thing when you torque it. And once you get those, take our nut and our washer off of these two. Remember, we didn't put Loctite on them yet. And we'll get those tightened up. You wanna go back and torque all of your hardware to the specifications and the instructions. Next, we'll reinstall our frame rail cover. We'll do that on both sides. Next, we're gonna go ahead and insert our removable arms. How you can tell right from left is this round tab is gonna be on the bottom. This tab here, it's gotta be toward the top and toward the inside of the vehicle. So go ahead and slide them in. Now they're gonna come with pins and clips, but we're not gonna install them just yet. We just wanna put the arms in. We're gonna test fit the fascia to see if we have to do any trimming. Now we'll put our fascia back in place. And this is why we always test fit before we do any cutting. As you can see, we don't, we're not gonna have to cut anything out of this. So we'll go ahead and put in our pins and clips. And you can see we have little space here. So if we take the pin and go in this way, slide in our clip just like that. Once you've test fitted your fascia, you determine whether you need to do any trimming or not, go ahead and put it back in place in reverse order from the way you took it out. Your kit's gonna come with plastic rivets to replace the ones that we drilled out in the fender wells. Don't forget to hook up your fog lights, and if you're doing any additional wiring, now would be a good time to do that before you get your grill back in place. And that'll do it for a look at an installation on the Roadmaster MX base plate kit with removable arms, part number 1427-3 on our 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee.